Right now we're going to talk about the lines of defense against infectious disease, and there's actually three of them. Conveniently, the three lines of defense are called the first line, the second line, and then finally the third line of defense. And they occur in order. So the first line of defense, basically, if it fails, the second one comes into play. And if that one fails, the third one comes into play. Um, the first and second lines of defense are nonspecific, so they aren't targeted. They just act on everything to prevent disease. And then the third line of defense is specific, and it basically uh, mounts an attack on a specific pathogen and eradicates it. So the first line of defense basically prevents entry of a pathogen into the body in the first place. The first line consists of the skin and the mucous membranes. And one thing we have to remember is that anything on the surface of our body is still considered outside the body until it's gained a portal of entry inside. So basically, um, our skin layer would be still outside, it's not in us. But you have to think about internally too. So inside of our mouth, inside of our, you know, the tube of our digestive system, inside our breathing uh, tissues, all of those still are external. They're not, they're not the internal environment. We're kind of hollow individuals and, and it's until we've absorbed that pathogen into our bodies that it's considered inside. Some examples of our first line of events would be our skin. Our skin actually uh, is acidic, so that will prevent some bacteria and other pathogens from being able to live and remain on our skin. We have enzymes in a lot of our body secretions, so in our tears, our saliva, our mucus, and our sweat all have enzymes that help kill off any invaders that might try to start in, you know, entering the body. Um, we produce mucus in a lot of our tissues, uh, especially in our respiratory tract. So lining our nose, in our, our trachea, our bronchi, our bronchioles produce mucus and the mucus will trap invaders. And then we have cilia lining our breathing passages, which are tiny little hair-like uh, structures that will sweep upwards and sweep the pathogen out and we also will cough to cause that pathogen to leave and our nose will be running so that we can blow our nose and, and make the pathogen exit our body. Um, and then finally our stomach is a very acidic environment um, and that purpose is twofold. One, we need acid to activate the enzyme pepsin, which is the enzyme that begins digesting protein. But we also need acid to act as a, a line of defense again. So if we ingest a pathogen through food or through drinking water, once it hits the stomach, some of the acid will work to kill off that pathogen. Unfortunately, if there's too much of the pathogen ingested, um, it won't be able to all be killed by the acid in our stomach and that's when we can get a foodborne or waterborne illness. Right now I'd like to give a little shout out to some of the beneficial flora that live in and on us. Um, so basically we are ecosystems in ourselves and more bacteria and microorganisms live in and on us than cells that make up us which sounds really gross, but they actually form relationships with us that are symbiotic and they help keep us healthy and, and safe. So they may change the pH of um, certain parts of our body to actually prevent other bacteria from invading or other pathogens. So um, we wanna take care of them. So when we take antibiotics, we actually are damaging some of our our beneficial flora, which is often why if you are prescribed antibiotics, you might be told to take a probiotic at the same time. So while you're killing off bacteria, you're reintroducing uh, beneficial bacteria back into your gut so that they can live and take up residence and prevent an environment for um, some 
nasty um, bacteria that might want to you know be opportunistic and take over while uh, we've killed off the beneficial ones that normally live there. So the second line of defense kicks in when the first line fails. So somehow a pathogen has gotten into the body. So this could be through a cut or a scratch um, or absorbed through you know our digestive system or entered through our alveoli. Somehow the pathogen has entered. This line of defense consists of our leukocytes, which you might remember are our white blood cells or WBCs for short. So what white blood cells do is they find an invader, they engulf it within themselves, and then they digest them. And then usually they die as well, um, giving up their lives to protect ours. So a fun fact about white blood cells is when we do have an invader um, and the white cells do mount an attack against it um, and they die, sometimes there's an accumulation of dead white blood cells in a region and that is known as pus. So if you have a pimple or an infected cut and you develop pus, the pus is actually the dead white blood cells that have given up their lives to save you. So our third and final line of defense is our third line, and it's a specific response from our immune system in response to an invasion. So on all cells, there are markers called antigens, and antigens stands for antibody generators. And our immune system recognizes our own antigens, our own markers, and doesn't tend to attack them. There are some cases where we um, our immune system gets confused and mounts an autoimmune attack. So auto means self. So basically they attack your own cells and that can be a problem. Um, invading cells have antigens on them too, but our body doesn't recognize these ones. So our immune system will create antibodies to attack and kill uh, the invading uh, antigens and, and as a result, the invading pathogen. And as mentioned before, the third line of defense is a very specific response. And we actually form antibodies to specifically kill one type of pathogen. So we can make a very targeted response and only kill the pathogen that we're intending to. So right now we're gonna talk about um, a little bit more detail about the third line of defense, just to show you how amazing and how specific it really is. Um, you don't need to know the steps of antibody protection, but it would be really helpful for you to understand how specific it is by paying attention to this next little bit. So the first two lines of defense are sometimes also called innate immunity um, or um, just kind of natural. It's just uh, not specific. Anything that's trying to get in or does enter, we have the same response. It's innate. Uh, it's not a learned behavior, it's just automatic. Um, so in this first part, it's showing that a microbe is getting through our surface barrier, so it's crossed the first line of defense. Um, a macrophage is another name for a white blood cell. It will engulf the invader, so in this case it looks like a bacteria, and it will then create an adaptive immunity response. So this is our specific response. So what happens is that macrophage will take the antigens that are found on the, the microbe and then present them to the outside of their cell. So basically they're offering the antigen out to um, helper T cells, which have receptors for the, the antigen. So they kind of come together, almost looks like they're giving each other a little kiss or a handshake. And the helper T cell then gets activated. And then the helper T activates beta cells or B cells, sorry, um, and the B cells start making antibodies and antibodies that are specific to the antigen on the invader. And then that B cell will then cre create or mass produce 
a whole bunch of B cells that are called, this is called a plasma cell clone. So all these plasma cells, and each of those plasma cells can now start pumping out antibodies to fight the invader, and then we can fight the infection. Um, one thing that's really neat too is some of those plasma cells will stop reproducing and they'll start producing, they'll just remain dormant in the body and those are called memory cells. And memory cells are ready for another invasion. So if that, an that pathogen tries entering our body again, the memory cells will instantly get activated and will mount an attack and will fight off that pathogen before we get sick. So vaccination programs um, play on that, that type of uh, immunity. So we basically make memory cells against the pathogen that we're being um, vaccinated against so that we won't get sick when we get exposed to the pathogen.